Hello boys and girls, Ultimate Hero here. Um, these next, this video is probably going to go before the last day, because on the 30th, that's where I'm going to put the November huge discussion. I don't think I've put that up yet, even though I should have. I don't think I have, actually. I, I will put that up probably after, so that'll be on the last day. So today, on, which will, when this is uploaded, the 29th, this is just a different video to go a little bit off topic, and the fact that I just want to record and render videos to stockpile, because, you know, holidays might come up, I might get busy, so I'd li at least like to have some video some big videos, like Persona and Paper Mario already rendered. Should I not be able to, and I could just upload them? <clears throat> anyway, um, if you can't read the title, this is another Let's Discuss, this is a special edition. You should have seen this coming. This is, uh, let's discuss Persona 4 Golden First Impressions. All I'm really talking about is how I'm feeling about through the game so far, and just on how, what's, talk about what's new, what's different, just all that crap. I'm not that far into the game, so this ain't a review, okay? I'm not gonna review this game before Persona 4, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna review Persona 4 when I finish it. And it'd be disrespectful and awkward on top of that if I reviewed Persona 4 Golden before Persona 4 itself. And it's almost, it's a, so far I can say, it might feel even disrespectful to compare the two games. But, uh, okay, let's just get started. Okay, how does the game work? You already know the story. Murders are happening. We gotta find the killer. If you can't, if you haven't watched my Let's Play, I'm just giving you a synopsis. Not up to where I am in the game, just of the beginning. If you hear the rumor of the Midnight Channel, um, make some, make a couple friends, and um, you sign a contract. You're in. You summon your persona. You fight shadows. You, Broske, and Chie form the investigation team to find the killer. You gotta save Yukiko. Once you save Yukiko, she becomes part of the investigation team. That's when they really start calling it that. Even though technically, the the social informs before you save Yukiko, though they really start talking about it when they get her on the team. And yeah, from there on, you gotta figure out. You gotta find out next victims. Save the victims before they're killed by their own shadows. Fight their shadows, because as you could probably figure out, they're gonna deny it no matter what. It's only natural. We can't blame them either when you think about it. I can't really blame someone for denying their darker selves if they had to face themselves like that. It's only, it's kind of natural. But, okay, now that we got the synopsis out of the way, one thing, if you played the game before and you want to skip through some scenes you don't like, or you just want to skip through to get to the new stuff, um, you can get straight into, you can just press start twice on your Vita, and then you automatically skim through the scenes. Which is a really cool, which, which is a really neat function, and I have taken advantage of it. Through the boring scenes, I will skip them. The funny scenes, like with Yukiko's laughing fit, or something, I will keep. And, of course, new scenes I have yet to see. There are some that they've added in the game, like on, um... One of the days, normally, where you would have, like, uh, right before midterms, where it was a rainy day where you could study, they replaced that day with a thunderstorm, and that shows off that, that of the new weather. I mean, you all know, it's even in the damn opening, that there's snow involved in the game, so they added, decided to add thunderstorms. Now, I believe what these do is practically repel everybody so far. This is my guess, because there's only one of these. I haven't seen any more, but... From what it looked like, after the, there was an event and the power went out, but the power came back, and I couldn't do much. I could still go to Aya's, I could still study if I so pleased. I think it has the same effects as rain, but I think it actually scares all the social link people away. But it doesn't matter to me, there's only really one or two I can rank up with in rainy days, so it doesn't matter if I can or can't. But, um, then you get like a little Mother's Day event with Nanako. Which can help your stats too, um, if you if you if you make the right choice. But um, there's that. There's also um, eventually when you're trying to save Kanji, you gotta you're gonna make or Nanako will offer you like the day you're supposed to first unlock Tanaka. It gets pushed on to another week. But however, Tanaka's changed to the point where if even if you miss Sunday, you can still watch on Monday and Tuesdays if you got the days off. So, I think it, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be different, because really I'll notice that when it's summer break, but, either way, I'm looking forward to it, <laughs> I want to buy a lot of his stuff, um, 
Uh, other new things, the follow-up attacks are the same, however the order has changed so far. From Instead of it, when you first establish a social link with an investigation team member, instead of them being like, Yos you became friends with Yosuke, Yosuke went out, DIE FOR YOU! Uh, instead of that, he will just simply, um, he will wake up a knockdown ally. Which is helpful, but sometimes I wish they would just take a hit for me, which hasn't happened yet, but I have a feeling that might happen soon. It's pretty scary, I don't want it to happen. But, um... Uh, uh, next up, there's also, once you get Chie and Yukiko, you unlock their move Twin Dragons. That's that thing you see in the trailer, one of the trailers, where, uh... They both summon their persona at the same time, does this big old spell. It usually, it happens after they, you do an all-out attack and there's some enemies lingering. It's, it's almost like extra damage for free. It doesn't take up any SP, they do it on their own whether you want them to or not. They just do it, and it does some good damage. It's pretty nice, so try to get some combinations of people and just see if it works. So it's a reason to keep Chie and Yukiko in a team. The other characters that can do this that we I know of... Well, this is all of them. Yosuke and Teddy, so if you, you might want to keep those two together. And of course, um, Kanji and Naoto. It's really cool. I haven't seen the other two yet, because I'm not that far in. But it's really nice. All our attack scenes are changed. I'm not sure if I'll put up text. I might just put up the Persona 4 Golden banner, because this won't take too long. And um, there are videos of people doing it already, so feel free to watch them if you haven't. Or if you want to, or you don't just don't want to be spoiled with the game, feel free. Um, th what else is new? The battle system also changed. You can now see if enemies resist some things. Like, we gotta, let's say we have an enemy weak to, that's resistant to physical. It'll say resist. There'll be like a little black shield instead of just seeing the normal damage compared to the previous game. So that's really nice, at least you could easily tell what's strong against what it's weak to. Um, a lot of enemies have some of their weaknesses changed. Some no longer have weaknesses, which sucks ass. And then you got to, uh... Ah, and then, uh, what else, what else? <laughs> now it slipped my mind. And then you got, you know the, the rare enemies? The rare enemies! You know how, let's just go to Persona 3 for a moment. You remember when you see those, you have to chase the fuck out of them, but once you see one of them, you just gotta hit him once and he's practically dead. Oh no, they got tired of that. Let's just say in between, they really work their asses up. And now, they practically resist everything except for physical attacks. And on top of that, the physical attacks don't do much anyway. So you pretty much have to get a critical hit, and then just, uh... This is as to my knowledge. I don't know if light or dark spells will work on them, which if they do, I'm gonna be using curse papers. I'm going, somebody's gonna be making lots of trips to the bathroom. But, um... You gotta really work your ass for those, and they actually do some good damage, and they can summon enemies, they're almost like God. They can summon enemies if they so please, they can make Tsukikaja to make you harder to hit them, so... Yeah, and they can use spells and then just run off, they can just hit and run. But if you beat them, you, you gotta really work your ass, so guess what, you're gonna get really rewarded. You get so much experience and a lot of cash now. It is amazing. I was under leveled, but I ran into a few of them and kicked their asses. And um, you just t you just wipe the floor with them, and there you go. You, you, I caught back up in no time because I fought Shadow Yukiko when I was like 13, going on 14, like level 13, about to go to level 14, and Yukiko was already 15, so I'm, we're already 25, and she is 26, so. Technically, I was under leveled, even though Yukiko was on level. So Yukiko was technically over leveled, and we're just barely on level. Which is alright, because I love waifu, and let waifu level up if she so pleases. Also, um, some some character, or wh you know how it was like when you got a move, or not a move, a new thing, like Yosuke will now die for you. Um, then you got the pick up a, part, a knockdown partner, like in 1, 3, 5, and 7, and 9. Now on the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, so it looks like you unlock a new skill, because I got uh, Yosuke to uh, level to rank 2 in a social link, I just ranked him up the first time, and he learned Malka Jam, which inflicts silence on one enemy, which that has helped me a good amount of time, so I haven't got rid of it yet, though I prefer Tentarafu. But um, here's something they kept, which this is a little pro tip, uh, especially if you bring in Yosuke. When you find enemies that don't have weaknesses, they are more prone to status ailments.
I guess that's to kind of make it fair. But take advantage of it. Take full advantage of it. <laughs> Remember those Maguses in Kanji's dungeon? Remember how I said use Tentarifu? Use those, and if there's just one of them, even one's a pain enough in the ass, you can just use Zumaka Jam and silence them. They can't do spells, and they'll still try to do spells, so they're wasting their turns doing nothing. So, what? Oh, yeah, and the shadows. They can notice you from so far. Like, if they barely appear on screen and they're looking right at you, they will notice you. But if they're like, if you're like, they're like to the side of you, you could easily turn around and they, when they notice you, they just make this big old jump in the air, which is so slow, you can easily get behind them right on time. So if you're behind them, you're pretty much gonna get the all out attack unless you miss your, like, your strike on them, which I hope not. It's happened to me a couple times, and I'm pretty sure it's happened to everybody. But, the battle theme is, of course, the common one is uh, time to make history, but if you get an uh, advantage hit, if you get the advantage, you'll hear a reach out to the truth, which I've been hearing, I've heard that way more than time to make history. And of course, they do play the, in mini, now they make, you know how, and during a mini boss fight, you had a, uh, you had a different version of Reach Out to the Truth. Now, because of all these diverse songs, it now feels like a mini boss song, which I like. It's like, ah, oh, yeah. I, I personally like the mini boss or first battle, as they call it. I call it the mini boss version because that's when you always hear it. Then, of course, the first time you ever fight shadows. I like that theme more than the regular Reach Out to the Truth, where it just begins with the chorus. I don't like that. I prefer the one where it has the guitar going. Dun -dun, dun -dun 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 I like that version more. Just the guitar opening up, and I like that. Um, another thing, I have to go back into, uh, is that all of the new stuff? Oh, oh, there's one more thing. I haven't seen this, but I don't want to find out. When I was in the dungeons for a while, in a room, I heard the chains. The chains. Death is back. You can find him not on New Game Plus anymore. According to somebody, they say he says he, they say he's hiding in a chest, and this guy's play says he's playing Persona 4 Golden. Yet I don't, honestly I don't believe it. I think that's bullshit because I know I was in that floor for a while, but I just heard the chains, but I didn't see him anywhere. It was honestly scary. It's like shit. I better get to the fucking stairs. Oh wait, guess what? Make your top priority finding the stairs, because once you find the stairs, you can go back and search for whatever. So when you see them, great. Continue searching. Because the moment you, you do what you're done, you just press the square button and Teddy will say, what do you want to do? You can proceed to the previous floor, or go to the next floor anytime. You'll just instantly warp. Your teleportation powers just got better. However, don't think you can just simply, if you want to get out of the dungeon, you don't have go-homes. Go you can't just simply go to the previous floor or previous floor because now they made the game more mystery dungeon like and you're just going to be going down if you go down the whole room completely changes that or your map just disappears unlike in Persona 4 the original Persona 4 where once you went through a dungeon until you left the TV world you can pretty much see it all on the map now it just clo it fogs itself up again so keep that in mind so but just when you find the stairs keep searching but if you hear the chains don't take a chance guys don't take a fucking chance I know I'm not next thing uh, here's the next another thing this one I love this so much shuffle time it pretty much always works in your favor do you know the moon card which I always loved in Persona 4 I hate it in this game now the shuffle time has this is this strange mechanic and it's really hard for me to explain okay this is the ones I'll memorize the most. Okay, let's say we got, you got, you know the cards, and, okay, before we go on, before, you know, Persona 3, you know how you had the wand card, the cup card, the sword card, the money card? You know you had those things in Persona 3 which could restore your health, give you cash, give you a more extra experience, or give you an item? Or it, in, in this game's case, it's now a skill card? You could actually, those are back, so you can get those. So let's just say we have... An experience card, an Emperor Arcana card, and a Moon card. Okay, now you can only take one card. Now, um, the thing about the card, okay, the Moon, the Emperor card, I'm not going to explain them all. They explain themselves anyway. I'm just going to explain the ones I give an example. Of course, you know what the experience, the wand, which is like that little leaf thing, the plant, really. I call it the plant, but it's called the wand, so the wand just gives you extra experience. You already know that. 
the Emperor has an awesome effect. It will always, if you get it, it will always level up your persona. It won't level you up, but it'll level up whatever persona you got. This makes grinding easier for your persona, because you can just practically go into it like an old dungeon, get shuffle time, and look for em just look for the Emperor card. That's all you gotta do. You could practically do that all day if you so please. But, okay. And then finally, you got the Moon card. The Moon card, it will ha cut your experience in half. However, you get to draw two more cards. So... Let's say, if you want to get all three cards, you can do this. First, take the moon card, so you can get two more. Then get the wand and the emperor. It won't matter what order you get them. But, but they have this rule where it always gets the arcana cards first, and then those extra stuff, like the wands and the other crap, after. So, you got the moon, which cuts your experience in half. Then you got the emperor, which says, your, your, the persona you have equipped will level up. And by the way, unlike in previous Shovel Time where you got something, it won't affect a random persona. It will always affect the persona you have equipped. And then you got experience. The experience will just give you the uh, just give you the extra. But in this case, it'll just like give you a little bit so that you didn't lose exactly half. You gained a little bit back. But if you get all, all the cards that were put out there in one go, you get a Shovel Sweep. What this will do is, it's kind of like a chain reaction. It's like a Lucky or a Bingo. Once you get one, you, you can go on the streak if you can, because the next battle you win, and if you fight, if you complete it, and if you win the next fight you go in, you always get a shuffle time. And then on top of that, you get a extra two picks. You can pick two extra cards. So let's say we got the emperor, the wand, the co the cash. Now, if that was the case, we could just pick all three and we get another shuffle sweep. Okay. Now let's say we got the cup. The ca like cash and you got the priestess card and a persona. Okay, now we got we got three points again, but we can't get all three. The priestess has another effect. The priestess will give you one more, but it'll turn a, a persona card into an arcana. Usually that's how it works. If not, it'll just get a random non-persona card if you can. So okay, the persona turned into let's say it turned into. Uh, a sword. Okay, then you can pick up the rest of three another shovel sweep, and you keep building up more and more until you can't get on any more. And it's really cool because you can go on this hot streak. I remember I got like my highest I've got was like eight in a row, and I was so happy by that. And on top of that, if you can get that streak going while you fight a rare shadow and you beat it, and imagine if there's the wand or experience out there, hell yeah. You're you're going places, man. You're going. I was like practically out of money when I, I used all my money to to get get SP so I can continue going through Kanji's dungeon because of Fox. He's in a pissed off mood. Thank you, Fox. But after that, after going through the dungeon and all that with that hot streak, I had fit a nearly fifty thousand yen. I was so happy. But. Okay, that's enough of the RPG stuff. The rest, there's probably more. The only one I know of, aside from that, which I have yet to experience, was that Vise can help you in all that attacks. But you fig you'll find the rest out on your own. That's all I know. I'm pretty sure there's new functions and mechanics as well that I have yet to see. But okay, next, let's just go on to the bit of what's left in the social world. You can sneak out at night, and there's a couple new jobs. I know one that here's one that I like the the bar. You can work at the bar which will increase your diligence and you could, if there's like a bunch of people go work on you can work on any day any day you want you check if there is any uh, check if there's four people if there's four people feel free to work that day cuz you'll get a next you'll get a bonus and i know okay there are four people but i don't know i only know the first two people increase stats the old man will Get, raise your courage, and the intelligent man will increase your knowledge. I don't know what the other two do. I'm assuming one's understanding and another is a uh, expression, though I don't want to take a chance. I'm fine with those two. I'll, I'll raise expression and understanding to other ways. But it's pretty cool. And then last but not least, there's of course the scooter, though I've yet to experience it, so yeah, you find that out yourself. I do know you can go into the city with that thing, but that's all I've seen. That was in the trailer, that's how I know about it. But, um, last thing, gardening. You can do gardening, it'll increase your diligence, so now there's plenty of ways to increase diligence. Because the majority way was just going through soccer club, and that was it. The only other thing would be envelopes, and nobody really wanted to do those after you got, like, a bunch of social links and all that crap, so, yeah. 
it's better to do that. And you can get some nice stuff. So far I've gotten some SP restoration items, which are tomatoes. They just have these other names, but they have effects you can use in the dungeon. I have one that's kind of, I think one that kind of reacts like a go home, which is really nice, and I like that. So you get to make your own items. Oh, yes, you can go into the, the Shiroku store and you could buy the firecracker, the pinwheel, the ice cube, and the ball lightning now. I'm pretty sure you can buy their multi-targeting uh, partners, or alter ego, whatever. You could pretty much, you could buy those four, and it's so nice that you can get them. It's so good. I haven't really used them that much, but I like to have them just in case, because, you know, there's, especially later on in the game, you're just like, I need to get a one more, or else this is not going to end well. So, yeah, you just use the items. But, aside from that, the game is very different. Last things I'll mention, they have this, they can show you some of the, uh, they have this little TV thing, where you can actually... Um, you can see, you can listen to music, you can listen to the soundtrack of the game, which is really cool, and I like that, on one channel. Another channel, you get to see a couple of live performances on the Persona music show, or live show. This is their concerts they do every year. And another one, they have some trailers, from, I'm pretty sure they're going to do the openings of each game, too. They play some of the trailers for the game, for the, all the Persona games, Persona 3, FES, Portable, Four and Persona One on the PSP. I haven't seen the Persona Two yet, though. I, I think by the time I think they just barely announced it, but when Golden was coming out. So, anyway, the other thing I th I like this. If you want to actually know about Personas and si Shadows, where they come from, like where they're based off of, you can study the Carl Jung mythology from. You know, you remember the Edogawa from Persona Three, the doc the nurse. You can actually. You actually get to watch a show where he dis he talks. It's a long lecture and it doesn't benefit you, but it's in case you want to learn about uh, shadows and uh, personas. And let me tell you, my mind has already been blown a couple of times for that. It's like you see your conscious, you think there's a lot to your mind that when you're awake, but your unconscious is so deep. It's in, it's just crazy. Just take a listen, read for yourself. It's nice to read when you just like you don't want to play the game for a bit. You just want to. In case you just want to take a little break and read some st something interesting to keep you keep the while away the time, but it's really cool. Okay, I think I've kept you guys long enough. I think that's really all I need to say anyway. There's a couple new events. Well, there's much more new events, but I've yet to get to them, so I'll let you guys find those out for yourself. This is a freaking first impressions video, not a damn review. I will review Persona 4 before Golden, but I would like to review Golden. But I think they're both great games so far. Uh, so far, Persona 4 Golden is amazing, and it's it's kept me hooked. So, yeah, so far my Vita is proving its worth. I get to play the Black Ops game because I don't care about Black Ops. At least the Vita version. I'd like to try out Black Ops 2 on like Xbox or something, or even Wii U. Anyway, hope you all liked the video. Any questions? If I can answer them, I'll tell you. If not, sorry, but. As of, if you think you want to get a Vita, hell yeah, get it for this game. If you want Persona 4, you haven't got Persona 4, but you want to play it, you may as well just get the Vita version if you don't have a PS2. Just get a PlayStation Vita, you can get this, and you can get Persona 3 Portable, Persona 1, and Persona 2 all on your Vita, which will kick ass. I have yet to do that, but I intend to do that one day. Especially Persona 3 Portable, but I would like to try out the first two Persona games. But yeah, so far it's proving me it's worth, so I just want more than one game. So maybe I'll try a little bit plan or something, but yeah. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy the video. Feel free to comment, especially if you guys are playing along. Tell me, I'd like to know where you're at so far. I just got it yesterday, so I'm already past Kanji, which that's crazy. I'm g I'm guessing by tomorrow I'll be done with Shadow Rise and Teddy. It's like, oh god. Anyway, um, I hope you all enjoy the video. Yeah. Hopefully, some of you guys will play the game too. And yeah, till the next video, stay gold.